time going to be on the door. That needs to be resolved early on. There may be some difficult decisions, and there may be some people, and, and I don't know, I don't want to prejudge, but it's been my experience that sometimes you ultimately have to take somebody that's a, maybe a section chief and move them into a different section and, and bring a, a deputy or assistant section chief up. Those are difficult decisions, but they have to be handled adroitly, and they have to be handled with calm and experience, and I've gotten that. And one of the things that I've always uh, found sort of puzzling in this state is that, um, like uh, large state charter bodies, when they seek legal counsel, they have to go through an approved list by the, the attorney general. <coughs> my, my feeling is probably they get on the list by who makes the big, biggest campaign donation. And uh, it's not that the uh, it, you know, the firms that are hired are, are bad firms. I don't mean to imply that, but it just seems sort of, sort of like it's a, a, a defect in the system to me. And I, I, I don't know if anything can be done to improve that. But it's a, a, a couple things, uh, and, and I agree completely with you. And, and I want you to know this is not maybe exactly popular uh, among some of my my brethren and sisters and in, in the, the larger law firms here in Columbus. And, and that's okay. I mean, leadership requires, you know, making difficult decisions. As I've gotten around the state in this short race, um, I'm just amazed at the number of people that are just incensed with the way our political system has not been working in the last few years. Uh, they talk about public corruption, and they talk about uh, political incompetence, and uh, neither party has a monopoly on one. I'm not suggesting it's Republican or Democrat. It's both. Yeah. And, and so, I, I bet I have, I have heard 10, if not 15 or 20 times, people that are not lawyers around the state that comment about the special counsel contracts, that, 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 that comment about the pay-to-play mentality, that's that's a, a popular buzzword, and about, I think, the culture of corruption is another, another buzzword that they seem to use. And so there, whether there is the, whether there is not, there certainly is, at least is an appearance of that. And I think that we have to do everything we can in public office to eradicate as much of that appearance of impropriety as possible. I propose continuing to expand the base of law firms that are under consideration, and the consideration will in no way be tied to whether or not they made a contribution or not. Uh, I think we have a responsibility in this state to make sure that uh, minority-owned law firms uh, and uh, women-led law firms that generally are precluded from being able to compete for those kinds of contracts we find a way to increase the, the base, if you will, the pool of uh, uh, potential special counsel to include those kinds of people. I think it's absolutely essential that we do that. I think there's a lot of smaller law firms out there that never receive any consideration. And yet I'll tell you, um, you know, I, our law firm is not a small law firm, but it's certainly not a large law firm. It's considered to be either a large, small law firm by Columbus standards or a small, medium size. But having said that, uh, I, I litigate, and some of my partners litigate on a daily basis against the larger law firms in town, and, and you know, there's no fall off in, in, in the level of quality. You have to be careful who you pick for those jobs, but there, there are fine lawyers that are in small law firms as well as in law, large law firms. We will, in my administration, expand the, num the pool so that the, the number of people that are being considered for those jobs is not going to be narrowed down immediately to just three, four, five, or six law firms. Now, having said that, and I don't want you to think I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth, you know, I can tell you there are certain specialty areas that will narrow down the field very quickly. If you get into IT law or patent law issues or FAA law, for example, uh, if you came to my law firm and we are an AV, the highest rating you can have for a law firm, uh, we don't do that. We don't have the expertise in that. So you have to go to the law firms that have that. So that will narrow it down. And that will probably mean that many times the same law firm or law firms will continually get those kind of uh, special counsel contracts. And I have no problem with that as long as it's the best law firm in the state of Ohio is getting the best value for its dollar. Yeah, as a U.S. attorney, were you ever involved in voter fraud cases or voter registration cases? A limited involvement in that, simply because uh, we have a, a, a voter section in the Department of Justice in Washington that has primary oversight in the United States for that. So what would happen is when we had allegations, and yes, we did have allegations uh, when I was United States Attorney, those would immediately be referred to the Department of Justice in Washington, and we would work with them 
uh, but the, the, the lead on the cases always came out of Washington. And that was so that the administrations had a uniform policy for the way they enforced those kinds of prosecutions, as opposed to the 93 U.S. attorneys in the country. Could you expand a little bit on your approach to open records? Glad to. Okay. Uh, I have been lecturing on public records and public law, or public records and public meeting laws, I want to say for at least 10 years. Uh, I do not want to hold myself out as an expert, but because I do represent a very significant number of uh, municipalities, and school districts, and on occasion county governments and things like that, and I'm past governance issues with respect to that. Uh, I've been forced to come up to speed very quickly on it because I regularly advise and discuss uh, those issues with them. Uh, anybody that knows 